Zukiza had said, Good Rale Amuhela Monitor Scientific Wednesday and Tech Wednesday Mona who X11. Today, we want to talk about everything that has to do with businesses, yeah. being an entrepreneur, and nanotechnology as well. It's an interesting yeah. thing that we're going to be talking about. But I want to imagine in studio, we are joined by Umon Kimland. And we do know, Guti, being an entrepreneur Sibu, is not easy at, at all, all because at you all, have all the financial risks that you have to take. Yeah. You have to make sure what's the stocks are cost variety. Customer service, I can yes. imagine, is something that you have to deal with as an entrepreneur. And this is why we feel it's so important, it's so crucial for us to highlight young entrepreneurs that are making waves and are doing amazing work within our communities. And joining us in studio today, yeah. we have Umo Ngimland, who is, of course, the founder of Essential, Essential Thrifts, yes. which is an online business. And he's going to be talking us to us, talking to us rather more about a business. Yeah. Mondi, welcome to the show, and how are you? Hi, Mondi. Um, I'm good in yourselves. Now we're good too. So, um, firstly, I want to get into when it comes to e-businesses that people tend to go into a venture into, mm -hmm. it's mostly influenced by the upbringing, the childhood and how they grew up. Yeah. Um, so I want you to tell us about your background and how you actually got into what you're doing now. Okay, so um, basically I grew up in uh, Manila, um, both parents, uh, three siblings, with a few cousins. Yana. So yeah, most of them, everyone is into art. Mm -hmm. They do music, I can't do music. They, uh, my tell. younger brothers can't ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't draw for anything. But um, in terms of clothing, we uh, we used to do a, a thing, me and my older cousin who I grew up with, um, every day or every Friday before the weekend. So it's like we just try and see what to wear. Yeah. We called it fashion show at like 12 a.m. side. Try to make sure, okay, the outfit for the weekend. And then yeah. every time you got new clothes, you just try and get an one item, mix it up with something that's already in there. Yeah. So that's how the fashion thing started. Yes. So would you say it was more on the stylist thing, uh, on the stylist part of it, or were you also interested in actually creating garments and clothes? Uh, it's more of the styling as mm -hmm. well as creating, because mm -hmm. with, with the thing, so we used to we make whatever we can with what we have. So I learned how to tunga, which is sewing, and then I yeah. even sport a machine now, so I'm just... I always say I want to make, eventually, I'm not good at sewing now with the machine, I'm good with hands. Mm. Yeah. As time goes by, I want to make ugly clothes, clothes that I can wear. Okay, yeah. ugly clothes. No, because <laughs> I'm not good. I'm not a professional in terms of that. So I think studying makes it, I don't know. But okay. I don't, yeah. <laughs> So what's interesting is with Isto Sako that you decided to open, um, a lot of people tend to look when they're opening a shops or uh, a store, they decide to go physically, have a physical store or mm -hmm. an online, but you chose the route to actually do it online. So why that? Um, I think uh, the most important, so uh, with physical, it's overhead. It's, you're going to be paying rent, mm. Mm. Which, is, is, which is going to make me increase the prices. So now you're no longer paying for the garment that you're paying for. You're paying yes. for the rent as well. You're paying for the shipping. You're paying. Mm. So that's why it's online. Even uh, Zara, um, they closed in 2020 when the pandemic happened. They closed like 10,000 stores worldwide. Mm. Um, and then went fully online and they m made a billion mm. off okay. that. So... It's overheads and yeah, mm -hmm. and it's more convenient. Everyone is on online. And speaking about online, you know, we do know that we have the fourth industrial um, fourth industrial revolution that is taking over. But it data is still Ish, being something is that, that people <laughs> struggle <laughs> with. data dura, you know. How do you make it more accessible for your customers that to be able to visit your online store? And what are some of the challenges that you face as an entrepreneur? Um, I think. Uh, so what I let me answer the first part. So it's um, what I usually do is like, <clears throat> sorry about that. If there's markets, I'll tend to have a go into markets, which which will bring the physical aspect mm. and no overheads as such, like uh, renting out a place, yeah. which is which is usually on weekends. And then um, it data is expensive. Yeah, yeah, that covers that. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, so the other struggles is like. It's an online thing, so mm. I have to uh, consult, which is longer. So I manage to consult everyone that I'm selling to. I have mm. them on WhatsApp, so I can understand what you want. What because at the same time, if you're buying at at a store A, um, a 28 jean is not the same as a store B. Mm. Sure. It, the fit is also another thing that yeah. you have to consider. So if it's online, you don't you have to estimate that and pray and hope that yeah. it will fit them exactly. Mm. So you have to know what they like. and yeah. Mm. So that's what I usually do. 
Okay, it's amazing because one thing one, one thing that's interesting about Tim Patras Gamonti is that he I'm one of the people that he actually got to dress. I remember going to Tikoala for the culture yeah. and I was styled by him and I, I call him my personal stylist. La le, la, <laughs> so I'll, it's also it's very essential for e businesses to set plans for e businesses are going what to do. So I want to ask when it comes to essential thrifts for twenty twenty three, what plans do you have for e business? Yeah, going what route are you willing are you planning on taking? Mm. So um, I think the most important thing is, is going, um, I want to start with the website, which is still having yeah. our own website so that people can reach it directly. Yeah. Instead of going through uh, social media platforms, then you know, you yeah. don't want to have that other feed and see other stuff. So you know when you're going to one click away, you're going there exactly to get the clothes. Mm. Um, and then it's just more consistency in terms of posting and, yeah, and engagement and, yeah. Ah, uh, listen, Monty, wish you all the best going into the future 2023. I hope that you guys at home are also inspired by your stories, and also inspired, you know, by his passion. And yes. Yes. as Sibuya said, he does amazing work. And we hope that all the entrepreneurs about the Pananga Party, you guys can see, you know what, the fourth industrial revolution yes. is taking over. So do make use of your Instagram, your Facebook, or your Facebook market mm, now mm, mm. that people can sell in Patagos, which I think is absolutely amazing. It is, because I think, especially when it comes to data now, mm. If you're buying data, it's going to cost you. So it's best to abandon, they tend to go for in-network providers who yeah. may be unlimited network because mm. now we have to go live on Instagram and going live on Instagram, it can chow like one gig of it. <laughs> so hopefully, as it's like it data mm. is going to be safer and cheaper. But let's do check out the keys. I'm going for a social media question here to put on plunge.